Most people don't realize what's happening in veterinary medicine now. Dramatic increases in fees, access to veterinary care. You should watch this video. My name is Dr. Andrew Jones and thanks so much for supporting our channel. If you've yet to do so, I encourage you to click up there to subscribe. And then when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. In the last few months, I've had a number of people, subscribers, former clients, talk to me about veterinary fees that I could just never imagine happening. Multiple pet parents having veterinary bills in excess of $10,000. One person had a cat that developed diabetes, secondary to being on corticosteroids. Their cat was extremely sick and they were told they needed to go to a referral cat clinic to have their cat treated. You're looking at things such as an extensive veterinary workup, IV fluids, 24 hour care, you know, a feeding tube, but to be at a veterinary clinic for a week, you know, come out with a bill in excess of $15,000. 10 years ago, I was practicing. Yes, we saw many sick dogs and cats, many animals that were critically ill, many animals that required 24 hospitalization, but I could never imagine sending a client home, especially specifically for medical care with a bill in excess of $15,000. I understand that times have dramatically changed. Veterinary fees have risen and fair enough, they're pretty low. Veterinary support staff obviously need to pay your staff more. They need to be on par with other businesses. All the other fees to run a veterinary practice, insurance, all the associated equipment. I get there is escalating fees, but it just seems to me that in some of the veterinary practices, the fees that veterinarians are now charging to clients, they've gone up disproportionately. I understand there's a huge demand and pet parents like myself, we really, really value our animals. If Tula was sick, man, I really would. I would spend what I need to get her healthy again. There are thousands and thousands of people. You might be one of them. You're just not in that type of financial position. And is it right that, you know, the small few who have the financial resources, they can afford to get this extreme high quality veterinary care for their animal, yet so many people can't. Maybe I'm a little bit old school. You know, I practiced for nearly 20 years. I own my own veterinary practice. Maybe I didn't charge enough, but we didn't turn clients away. I mean, if a dog or a sick cat came into the clinic, we at the very least saw that animal. We offer payment plans. We even set up a fund for animals in need. Veterinary care, it's gone on the track of human medicine. There is extremely sophisticated advanced diagnostics. You know, it's now not uncommon to have animals getting MRIs. As one veterinarian pointed out on the escalating fee crisis, he said there's this gold standard of veterinary care. And the example is a dog that's potentially strained and or torn their ACL, their cruciate ligament. You can sedate the dog, you can palpate them, you can see if there's laxity and movement, is there a drawer sign confirming an ACL tear? But the gold standard, go ahead and get an MRI. It's another $2,000. And this veterinarian's point that if you are a skilled, fairly competent veterinarian, you should be able to make a pretty good diagnosis just based on that initial clinical exam, physical exam findings, what you're feeling with palpation. And then if you have clients that don't have the financial resources to do the gold standard type of practice, you can still offer them solutions. Yeah, what it seems with many cases and what I'm hearing from many pet parents is that clients are just being offered, this is the gold standard. These are the array of different diagnostic tests we need to do first before we can make a diagnosis. And then if we do make this diagnosis, these are the X number of things we're gonna do to get your dog, your cat better. Yes, that could cost thousands of dollars, but isn't your dog, your cat worth it? Many people just don't have those financial resources. I think it's reasonable and fair to then offer some like lower cost solutions, but still offer a path to helping that dog or cat get better. So what are some of your options? Well, number one, you're going to need veterinary care at some point. So you need to have a good relationship with a local veterinarian and find someone who understands sort of where you're at. Like if you have limited resources, a veterinarian that's willing to work with you. Many are, there's still old school veterinarians out there. Second, think preventively. Do what you can to keep your dog, keep your cat healthy. Feed them as best you can, a good quality animal protein, as your cat is not eating kibble. Be diligent about regular exercise. Consider some of the inexpensive supplements like the omega-3 fatty acids, so important for so many of our dog and cat diseases. 
learn about the different remedies that I discuss in the channel. For example, the itching cat that was put on prednisone and developed diabetes. A once daily antihistamine like cetirizine, my opinion, that would have been a better option. There's over a thousand videos on the channel and we've discussed every common dog and cat disease with an array of different remedies. Then most important is just being a really empowered, engaged pet parent. You advocating for your dog, you advocating for a cat when and if they're sick. You need to be asking a whole bunch of questions. Like, do we need to be doing that diagnostic test? Yes or no. Perhaps we don't do the diagnostic test. And if we didn't, you know, what would your treatment be? And ask about potential side effects, especially long-term medication. Then ask, is there a potential safer alternative? Ask your veterinarian about payment plans. I mean, what if an emergency happens, you're not in a financial position? Well, at the very least, still see you and accommodate your financial needs. This is a big problem in veterinary medicine, and there are going to be millions of pets that aren't going to get the veterinary care they need. So just do what you can to try and ensure that your dog, your cat, they're not one of them. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.